How you doing? Welcome to Community Crossfire, another point of view. I'm your host, Norman Oliver. Ladies and gentlemen, we have another exciting show. We have Wilmington's finest from the police department. We're going to have ask them some good questions, find out what's going on with crime and what's happening in our city. Um, so welcome to, uh, to both of you. Thank you. But yeah. before I get to my guests, let me make a few announcements. First of all, let me congratulate um, University of Delaware for beating up on our Dell State Hornets uh, yesterday. See, that's the difference between Delaware State and University. See, we have a little class. We, we congratulate people. You know, it's a funny thing. You know, we beat them in basketball. They call the cops. They call the National Guards. They they call the coaches down. Oh, Norman Alva came on the show. We talking about the coaches. And no, 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 no. Just congratulate each other. Right. And so I'm being congratulatory. And my man, uh, Butch Ingram, uh, who's a graduate of the University of Delaware, was giving me a hard time the whole day. See, they, see, they know how to jot. So now that I gave you all the praise, now let me beat you up a little bit. Because I can't just be too happy. So <laughs> if you look at the schedule, if you look at it, so we're one and one. You beat us in football in this calendar year, we beat you all in basketball. Our band was better than your band, so that makes it two to one. And our cheerleaders look a lot better than your cheerleaders, so now it's three to one. So Delaware State still wins. Ha! So that should make a man. And besides, we party better. You should come to our party at homecoming. Our parties are a lot better than your party, so that makes us four to one. So University of Delaware, you had that one win. Um, also, I want to thank, I do want to thank Herman Holloway Jr. and Tyrone Brown. Um, we we uh, were able to get a young lady in rehab. Um, I, what I don't know, I, don't, I didn't really understand the process. We got her into the rehab down on Kirkwood Highway, I guess, detox. And then they were great, kick her out like after seven days or whatever, and she had to get, a, get into treatment. And Herman and TB, Tyrone Brown was able to get her into a place in Philadelphia. You know, so I guess the moral to the story is a lot of people are looking for help but they can't find it. Um, and that's another issue for another time. I'd like to get some people on to talk about that. I want to thank Alexandra Coppich and also Gary Hutt for filling in for me um, and doing a yeoman job. So thank you both. And also I got a few announcements before I go to the police. Also, um, happy birthday there to Joe Bryant. Um, Joe, I'm sorry I missed your 60th birthday. And Joe asked me to announce this about employment opportunity. Newcastle County, their paramedics, starting salary, $37,000. That's pretty cool. Uh, and the closing on these to get your application in is going to be October 7th. So I would definitely do that. Uh, I think what they're saying is um, you go to the headquarters on DuPont Highway every Thursday from 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. and on Saturdays at 10 a.m. and great job opportunity. Also, I hear, I hear that this is going to be a pretty hot show on next Saturday, uh, September 14th, Machine Gun Kelly. Is that the 14th foot set? Yeah, it sounds pretty serious. Machine Gun Kelly, it sounds pretty serious. He's a rapper. He's a rapper. Young Don't, young see, you, you, you up on it more than me. <laughs> Travis Scott, K. Dell, this is cool, man. So it's going to be at Foxtail Flea Market, two stages, food trucks, games at Tum and Garrett Park. Uh, some young guys, I'm, I'm part of Sun, and some other ones are um, promoting this. I, I think you guys should go see that. There's a lot of events going on that weekend. A lot of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. All right, tell me what's going on. Tell, first of all, um, you're the first female chief of police, right? That's correct. Tell, tell me a little bit about yourself and, and, and tell me how you feel. Um, pretty much I'm a fellow woman, Tony, like the inspector over here. I, I grew up in Union Park Gardens, went to school here. So I definitely have a love for the city. Um, you know, there was a time period where I think when I first came on, you had to live in the city and then they gave you the option and you now our, our kids were raised here, our family's here, my parents, I'm about one mile from where I grew up. Mm -hmm. So um, I have a vested interest. I, when I was a kid, I would I spent a lot of times in the community centers, um, the YWCA. Um, Miss Barbara Washam is one of my mentors mm. when I was a little girl. Um, used to go to Walnut Street Y, 10th and Walnut, and then Boys Club. So wow. spent a lot of time in the city. Okay, Inspector. Uh, again, my name is Bobby Cummings, uh, current inspector with the uh, Wilmington Department of Police in charge of the operations division. Um, I too was raised in the city of Wilmington, born in Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, been here since I was three years old. Uh, lived on all parts of the uh, all parts of the city. Uh, went to school starting at Lower, Mary C. I. Williams, Northeast. Uh, went to George Gray, Warner, uh, P. S. Dupont for a year before they did DSEG. Mm -hmm. uh, end up graduating from Claymont High School. Mm. Um, so again, I have a vested interest in the city. Um, lived here majority of my life. I still own a home in the city. Um, 
plan on retiring back to the city once I get to that point. Um, and again, love what I do. You know, that, that's interesting with, with both of you with your background. So, so let me just start it, start it off with the questioning. Well, just that alone, does it frustrate you a little bit knowing that you grew up in the city, just now your position is dealing with some of the crime that's sometimes plaguing the, the city streets that you both grew up on? Well, it's, it's the crime. Um, you look at more so even, the, even when I first came on the department, I think the inspector can say this too, that it just seems like the violence has gotten at a younger age. Because if we had a robbery happen like in the late 80s or something, usually it would have been a male or 20s or something, 30s. And now, you know, on the street, you know, you have teenagers with guns um, that don't think twice. I mean, that's the first way to settle a disagreement. So well, that, ha that has changed that behavioral over the years since when we probably first joined hmm. the department. Well, what's the youngest person that you can recall was involved with gun violence on the streets or had a gun? 12 maybe? Yeah. 12? So, 12. So, so it's that yeah. young? Yes. Yes. Th is the drug element uh, a big part of that, the, the, the gun violence we're having? That's, that's part of it. Um, I think, it, you know, there's the educational system. There's a lot of things that um, I've seen um, change over the years. Um, you know, I remember a little bit part of that DSEG too, and I think what this mayor's administration is trying to do also is to bring uh, community schools back in the neighborhoods because that's where everything was focused when you were younger at mm -hmm. your school, all your activities and everything that you had, your parents. Um, you um, couldn't get away with too much usually mm -hmm. when you, right. in your neighborhood. Yeah. You know, you know, you most of your school and stuff is in the Northeast area, and a lot of the shootings and violence is over that area. Um, what do we do? I mean, where, where where did it come from? Well, I'm I'm not going to say I don't I don't know where it came from, but again, it's um, individuals not making uh, good choices. Um, and like you said, early on when we grew up in the city, you know, you were involved in fights and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And back then, you know, you use your hands, you fought people, and again, mm -hmm. we all say this. You know, we fought, we became friends and things of that nature. They were not, the, these weapons were not involved in right. these kind of incidents. Um, and somewhere, the mentality of where you have to end someone's life um, for a minor infraction. Um, again, I, I don't know where that mindset came from. Mm -hmm. But again, that's the kind of stuff that we need to work on because if we don't change that kind of mindset, you know, as things that we think they're bad now, they're going to be a whole lot worse if we don't make better decisions on how we deal with uh, conflict. We, we talked a little bit about this in the green room, mm -hmm. um, about the, the rape that just take, took place over in, in Brown Town. Um, and, and what I'm trying to get my arms around, and you, mm -hmm. I think you guys were explaining to me a little bit um, in there, that when you have, to, we know that it was 10 to 12 kids or teenagers. I mean, based on the news journal, not necessarily that the news journal know what they're talking about. Um, and we know that there were like three victims, I guess. Two or three victims, two, yeah. two victims. It seems to me that someone should know out of 12, I mean, who keeps a secret, 12 teenagers? How do they keep a secret like that? Well, or do you, or, or you guys are not letting us know the secret? I mean, we have two people of interest that we're looking at, but I mean, there is a little bit of mentality too that's another thing we were talking about, the gun violence is the no snitch. And um, you would be surprised sometimes when finally we do get somebody in and when they have to um, save their skin or something like that, sometimes they're not necessarily having that no snitch attitude. No, I, I mean, yeah. they're working with their lawyer to coordinate things mm -hmm. um, because everything is due process. Um, mm -hmm. You go through the court system. Uh, so, I mean, you know what I'm hoping that and what we're trying to change with our, um, having closer bonds with the community is because um, there's a lot of good folks out there working is not to have this sort of I'm not getting involved kind of mentality. We really, really try when you call in the radio room, if you don't want to be approached, that's fine. Um, just if you can give us the information, um, whatever need be, if something happens out there. We have a camera program, Share Visions, where people can have cameras, their own private cameras. Um, that information is on a database, so if something happens, um, like for example, we had a shooting, we were able to pull that uh, citizen's mm -hmm. um, camera footage, look at it, and able to solve one of our shootings. Okay. 
So it's it's a variety of whole things. I mean, you know, looking at trying to um, have crime decline is a variety of things. It's just not only the police presence, um, having youth intervention specialists out there working with the youth. I mean, having programs, I mean, you look at, and you mentioned something about detox, that's only like seven days. Right. People really need uh, something that's going to be substantial for drug rehabs. The, the list is so long. Mm -hmm. Affordable housing. More importantly, jobs, mm -hmm. I mean, out there. I mean, people need to work. There's a whole, bunch of, there's a whole lot of variables. It's a whole. That's why I said there's a ton of variables. Um, I mean, we can keep the presence there on the street strong. Um, having officers out there on foot and on bicycles and showing a strong presence, um, you know, th that is helpful, but it's going to be a variety of things. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you just tuned in, we, we're um, talking about public safety. We have uh, inspector and the chief of police on. Um, if you have um, some questions, I hope you have some good questions to call in about. Let me ask you um, another question. W w this is just me thinking mm -hmm. because I never have questions until you come on. Um, we have a lot of laws on the book, and when you talk about a 12-year-old out there with a gun mm -hmm. or selling drugs, we have a law on the book about lottery. I, I've always thought that if we just enforce that more, you know, and put the, get the parents involved, so you so you get these 11, 10, 9-year-olds out on the streets uh, mm -hmm. past curfew, I think that if we just enforce those laws, do, do, do you think we enforce them enough or you just don't have we time? Have, we have curfew um, now going on. Uh, within the city. What exactly is that? Um, where we have officers working certain nights of the week and we don't advertise it so they don't know. They go out to all the areas where we know that usually the youth are congregating. Um, the police officer will um, pick them up, bring them back to the Walnut Street Y. Um, usually what we like to do first is we contact their parents mm -hmm. and they basically get a warning. Mm -hmm. um, but. They, they go through in a, a database that we keep and then if we pick them up a second or a third time then the parents are going to be held a little bit accountable um, for their child especially when you've got nine ten year olds wandering the street at like 11 12 o'clock at night okay so I mean it's it, and, al and also guys so you, you got me mm -hmm. on the road now and I'm thinking as a do we, um, a homicide we don't have a homicide unit um, and, and if we don't, I mean, no, somebody, we don't somebody have, asked me to ask that question, right? And it was like, well, how do they solve some of the killings if we don't have a homicide? And I had Chief Zerbo on several times in the past 12 years, and he's, he would always come and be a straight, and I hope, uh -huh. you're, doing, I hope you're still watching, Chief. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I don't understand we that. Have, we have certain officers or detectives that are called major crimes, and they investigate homicides, robberies, um, some of your real heinous crimes towards um, persons. There, all we also have two retired folks that work in work cold cases, um, cold case homicide. Okay. So mm -hmm. we don't have. When you're saying homicide unit, and you look at some of the other police departments, they have like a few, two or three people that are uh, dedicated just to investigating homicides. Um, we have certain individuals that we feel are experiencing it's qualified just not detectives. It's just not called that. It's not just called, right. right. Oh, okay, okay. It, um, if, if you read, again, back on the news journal, if you read their statistics, right, about mm -hmm. crime in the city, and you read the reports that you guys put out, mm -hmm. it's like night and day. Who's right and who's wrong? We're both right. And I'll, I'll clarify that. <laughs> no, I will clarify. have to clarify. I will one. clarify that because, um, unfortunately, at this point, um, if we compare it to last year, our shootings of persons out on the street are a little bit elevated. However, our crime consider part one crimes, which is crimes against persons, um, your assaults, your robber robberies, um, rapes. They are actually down. Um, the percentage and I'm not sure the exact I know when we ran the figures the end of June it was 12 percent um, so so what's up no it's no, down no. It's that's down. down so but what, what is up the shootings the, oh, uh, and that's we that's just actually had a shooting a uh, couple I think two days ago and through an evaluation it looks like it may have been self-inflicted because they basically said they got shot one place you know you put in the hours investigation found out that they were shot somewhere other way and the evidence looks like uh, maybe they shouldn't have been having a gun. You know, they've had mm -hmm. certain um, things that, that the court mandated, and 
it's not uncommon sometimes that we have some that are self-inflicted. I had um, Braden, Braden O'Neill, um, Braden O'Neill, I guess from probation mm -hmm. parole on my show, I guess about six months ago. And what I didn't know is that 98% of the cases come through his office that they plea out. Um, do you think that's a good idea? Or do you guys work in conjunction? We work very closely with the Attorney General's office. We have a program. Well, we're not going to tell who, who our top 25 folks are, um, but we have a high-risk offender because we know certain individuals out there are the main perpetrators that are um, behind the gun violence, behind the gun trafficking, the drugs. So we're, with the Attorney Generals, have identified through a certain, we have our criteria, it's just not willy-nilly, who these individuals are, and they're the ones that we start targeting. Because you figure if you can knock that person out, you know, make sure that whatever their cases are, because sometimes they have cases in three or four different courts, you go after that individual and then hopefully with the thing that they do get the, the jail time and then also their bails a lot of times are elevated. Um, so if they are considered high risk offender, that attorney general goes right in the court with our officers and our detectives and pleads the cases that these individuals should get the higher bail. We would prefer that our jail cells be be having the high-risk offenders in there instead of some individuals that really can't pay their bails and have very, what we would call, minor crimes. Wow, this conversation is getting really interesting. <laughs> you know, if, if I was to draw a circle around the city of Wilmington, right, mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and, I, and I assume that most folks watching would do the same thing, that we probably could figure out where most of the crime is, most of the shootings. Maybe we could or maybe we couldn't. I mean, and we, we may probably be biased or prejudiced in our thoughts because we know some of the areas that when you read about it or when you see the cop cars flying, you mm -hmm. know where they're going. Do, do we give those areas more attention or what, or we don't? You know, I mean, like, I don't, I, it just seems to me like, let's say certain areas, I don't want to say, let's say Greenville, whatever. Mm -hmm. We don't hear about that, even though we know crime is going out there, right? But we, nobody's standing on the corner shooting someone. But we know certain areas in the city where that's happening. Do we, are we starting to give those areas more attention or do it, or, or am I off base? Yes, and, and what Just I would what, like. Just what, I'm off base? No, you're not off base. Okay, okay. And if you look at it, most <laughs> of the shootings are off a lot of your main corridors. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, they're coming into the city. Okay. And they're also in a lot of areas that have probably 75, 80% rental. Mm -hmm. and a lot of vacants. So there's a whole different correlation. So that's my point. So, so if you know that, mm -hmm. are we going to start giving those areas more attention? Or do you? Or, and I just don't know. You don't want to tell me. Yeah, no, yes, we do. Okay. Um, so now you know. So, and then the other thing is, I mean, it's not that we don't neglect the other areas, but what we do is we look at calls for service. Um, there's a program that the Newcastle County Police Department uses. It's called TAPS. Um, we're right into three months now, or yes. two months worth with what the is taps. From, let the inspector address that. It's targeted analytical policing system. Well, so I couldn't even say that. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what you do is you, you take a look at your data um, and the incidence of crime, and you determine what criteria you want to take a look at, and you map that out. And like you were saying, it gives you an idea of where crime's happening, and then you kind of deploy some of your resources to address those issues within those areas. Mm -hmm. uh, again, without being specific, um, we do look at those areas, they do get some high visibility patrol and then whatever else may, may be needed within that area, not only police services, but different departments throughout the city that may provide a service in that area, again, that can help with some of the things that are going on within that particular area. Um, 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 am I off base or a little crazy when, when I start seeing gun violence going up in our neighborhoods and I start seeing somewhere? young folks who I knew who came through my basketball league getting shot and killed. Uh, when I start asking for the National Guards, is that a little bit drastic? Because I've said it on the air, and I don't bite my tongue, you know, so, mm -hmm. I mean, it is, that's, I mean, I'm honest about how I feel. At some point, I just thought, like, you know, maybe these guys need more help. Is, is that measure just too drastic to start saying, okay, we need the National Guards, or we need help from the state, we need help from the county? Should it be a metropolitan police force? I know I just, mm -hmm. well, five different things, but, right. If you, too, if you can address that, 
Um, that that would be a little bit drastic. Okay. Okay. Why? I don't I don't want the. I mean, some of us. You know, I was very young when the late sixties happened and everything, that, and uh -huh. a long occupation in National Guard. Um, but we work jointly with a lot of different operations with the county police and the state police. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got a good working relationship with them. We call them up and. and Mostly, they like to work like on the borders or right where the county and, and the city uh, join, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, let's face it, criminals do not know jurisdictional boundaries. So some of the ones that we have are high risk offenders. Uh, we um, share intel with the county. They're out in the county conducting business too. They just not only conduct their illegal activities in the city. Right. And you got to realize the city is being urban environment. Everybody's on top of one another. They're still, they're out in the county doing things too. And, okay, well, just real quick, I, I think um, also what you're getting at is the perception of crime in the city, um, what people see, sometimes, again, perception becomes their reality. But my reality, <coughs> my reality of the city is the city is not that bad for what, um, <coughs> excuse me, I need to clear no, this one. Mm -hmm. um, again, the perception is that the city is bad and it's not. Crime, Incidents of crime do happen, and they don't just happen in the city, they happen all over the United States. Mm -hmm. um, our city is a city that is safe. Mm -hmm. um, do we have incidents of crime? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, are we able to deal with that? Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. um, do we have plans and um, operations to combat some of that? We do. Mm -hmm. And in that, we partner with the community, we partner with our local, state, and federal agencies to handle those matters. And going to uh, a measure of bringing in the National Guard Again, that's not needed at this point. Mm -hmm. See, see, and, and and I like this dialogue, by the way. Thank mm -hmm. you, thank no you problem. both, mm -hmm. right? Because you got me thinking. But when you read some of these national publications, right, or when you get the news journal, going back to them again, and they say, well, the city is one of the third worst places to live, you know, for, mm -hmm. as far as crime, for our size, right? Is, is that did I read something? Did I read something capita. like that? Per capita, but per, then per capita. us. But then the other thing too is we have two populations in the city. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have our nighttime but are, population see, but and are, are our they, daytime. Are they wrong though? Uh, are these national publications are they wrong saying that per capita? They're looking at um, the seventy thousand when we're at nighttime. They're not looking at the hundred and fifty some plus during the day right. when we have all the major banking industries right. and the city's very vibrant. Yes. Um, so they so just, they just taking into account. Okay, let's just use that as an example. Say just at night, they're taking into account that the shootings. So it won't make us the third um, a city, make us the fifth. You know, I mean, that, that perception, we got to get out of that, right? I mean, you agree with that? Right. I mean, we got to figure out a way to even, not even be in that conversation. See, but if, you, if you're just basing everything on per capita numbers and you don't take in consideration everything else that's happening around the city and you only look at that one perspective, then that's going to be your perspective of what's happening. But if you, again, look at every, everything else that's going on, that 70, uh, 150 some odd thousand people come into the city during the day to um, operate and do their business, and there's no, there's no major issues going on, then you wait till the population, um, that population leaves the city, and you are stuck with the residents, not stuck, but you have your residents who live in the city, um, who are primarily um, non-homeowners, and there are incidents that do occur. Um, as we know, there's some shootings and there's some stabbings and things of that nature. So if that is your perception of what the city is, then you're totally wrong. So again, don't just take one perspective and make that our city. That's not our city. Okay. Our city is much greater than that. Okay. Let me and then you have big events that are down the riverfront where 4th of July, where you have, I don't know how many people, thousands of people that they have gathered down at the riverfront. and. It was, it was uneventful. I mean, we had the kids and the juveniles and the adults shooting fireworks off, and you know we had to address that. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and we actually had one case I think that's actually going to go federally. Let me let me ask you a personal question. Um, your boss, who was an ex police officer, mm -hmm. um, is do you find it difficult? And um, maybe because philosophically you may think one way, and by him being out on the streets in the 70s that he may think another way? Or do you guys genuinely agree 100% of the time? Nobody agree 100% of the time, but do you, are you pretty much on the same page? We, and does he give you that latitude? I'm sorry. He gives us latitude, and we, we'll talk and we'll update him. 
And I know the mayor knows, and he, the city has changed so much uh, with policing and over the years when he was a police officer, just like we said earlier in this program, when I came on in 86, I mean, looking at the way crime was back then, I mean, yeah, I think you had to come to the crack, crack, crack epidemic in the late 80s and some other things, that things have changed um, with policing and the different type of individuals that you're now encountering. So pretty much you you are able to run the department the yes. way you see it. I mean, I mean, I, I ask you that question because folks ask that question a lot. I'm sure you get right. it. Right, and then, but here's the other thing which I think is important too. I mean, yes, the, the chief is held as the accountable person, but more importantly, in any different organization, um, you have your staff, you have your officers, and I really believe to hear their input too because that officer is the one on foot, the boots on the ground, day in and day out. It's sort of important to hear from them along with our supervisors and all our levels of management on what they feel can help contribute um, to make the police department serve citizens better. And bo both of you um, have been patrol officers and both of you have been mm -hmm. in the city for a while and you both come through the ranks. Is this what you signed up for now that you're in the leadership positions? Is it what you thought it would be, or is it totally different? I mean, like, like it's different being an administrator. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, like I tell people when, like, when they take. I mean, I, I could use say a city council person. Mm -hmm. Like when you're a community leader, then you're like, oh well, this person ain't doing this, this, and that. Now you're in that position. Now you're like, wow. So I mean, is it the same thing happening with you too? Um, it's different that you're in a management position and you're not out physically on the street day in and doing the job because you're planning the operations the budgets, um, that administrative function. Right. Yeah. Um, so that portion is different, but you're still a cop. I mean, even though we're cops 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we could leave the show and then something happened. I mean, we're primed to act and go after something if we see something on the street. See, see, see I, would, I would find it difficult, right? Because people who you went through training with and everything, now mm -hmm. you're their boss. And you lose friendships now because you got to make decisions. And sometimes the decisions are not always popular. You may even have to reprimand folks. I'm sure mm -hmm. you guys have had to do that. Well, again, like the chief said, um, we meet with our staff regularly. And we have open discussions. And we're open for input. So we, the more you involve your staff, the easier the outcomes are. Um, and we let them know sometimes uh, that there are going to be some decisions that are made that you're not going to agree with. And you may not totally like. And we understand that. And at the end of the day, for our department, the chief makes the final call. We make recommendations, and she makes the call. And that's, that's what it is. That's pretty cool. Let me ask you both one more question before we go to the lines. Um, you've been on the force for how long? Um, be 27 years in October. 28. Have either one of you had to shoot at someone or been shot at? I've been shot at, and I've had to, to um, fatally shoot somebody. Wow. Well, I've not shot anyone. And um, have not been shot at. Because I remember the chief came on and he told me he had, and, and, you know, like I would talk to Freddie Mason, he said, man, I never use my gun. So and it's interesting that some people could be on the yeah. force mm -hmm. that long and people just automatically assume that most cops shoot someone or be shot at. And it's, it's, it's not, no. that's not a reality. It's, it's just Mr. on, Time it's just on TV. Right. Yeah. How you doing? Let's put the, um, put the number up. Let's take, some, let's take some good calls for uh, the good folks. I think I think we covered a lot of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there anything that you wanted to cover? I mean, I know you wanted to talk about some statistics or some other things. Anything that you? Because uh, I think your secretary, uh, what's her name? Lisa Hempel. Le uh, Lisa. Lisa said, "Well, you be nice. Make sure Lisa." <laughs> they come on cross and ask some tough questions, but they handle themselves very well. Is there anything that you wanted to bring up? Um, no, just that um, you understand the police presence is important, and what we're hoping here. Um, when we talk to city council and I'm sure the administration's behind to try to also start maybe another academy class and recruitment. Um, are you, are you at capacity now? Not fully yet. We're almost there. Okay. We're not, a, and, and. Hey, turn, turn your TV down. Um, when it says, please turn your TV down. <laughs> it's an echo in here. How you doing? You have a question? Uh, yes. Good evening. Good evening. Um, <clears throat> I've been um, watching this show, and my question was about the curfew law, but um, I know one summer you had a time limit on that curfew law, 
And also, I would like to know: um, Are any of these cameras working that you have in some of these in some of these areas? Hey, very good questions. Thank you. I'm actually going to have Inspector Cummings answer that because he just did the inspections on them. Yes, uh, cameras that are out in the community are working. Um, Hello. Hold on for a second. And All right. The curfew. Uh, does still have hours that um, are associated with it, yes. Yeah, and that's a good question. Like, I know the cameras downtown, they always work. But, you know, I did have an incident one time mm -hmm. when somebody bust a window downtown, mm -hmm. and the camera was not, it couldn't see because of the trees. I'm like, wow, we're spending all this money. We got downtown vision, mm -hmm. and the camera's not working. Those are one of the things that we take into account where we go out and do inspections from time to time, and we'll bring in parks and, work, or parks and recs if we need. Uh, trees cut back and things of that nature when uh, something is... So, but pretty much all of them are up and running. Do yes. you still do drug mugs? Yes. Because I looked, uh, and, and the last time it was updated was like six months ago. How you doing? Welcome to the show. <laughs> you, laugh, um. yeah. you know I'm on it. Yeah, I, I got to do my homework before I come on TV, man. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Um, hello. I have a question. Um, I know there's been talk about a serial killer going around and a couple mm. girls' bodies and things been found. Um, why haven't the city or the public heard anything as far as uh, like a suspect or the victims? Who were they named or anything? Hey, so t t t t t t time off for one second. I, I never even heard of that. Wow, thank you for calling this show. We have a serial killer here in the Wilmington? I know that there were um, there was a girl that was found by Gander Hill and a girl also over across from the welfare office on Vander Avenue. Wow. And I just never heard anything else, like, publicly wise or anything. Wow. Hold on. To, that's a good question. Because I, I, I didn't hear I've never heard of that. Go ahead. I can't address uh, that one. Turn your TV down. Turn your TV down, please. Please, please, please. I beg you. Go ahead. Um, we, we did a public release. We had a lady who was um, stabbed uh, critically in the 300 block of Shipley Street. Uh, she was in the hospital probably for a couple weeks after that, and then she su she's, um, succumbed to her injuries. Um, and then we had, I'm, I can't remember the exact date, uh, one lady who was found who was, um, I think, 16th Street near the bridge, um, was stabbed throughout her body. Now, the thing is, is when we look at this, um, there are some things that are not very similar and there are some things that are similar. Hmm. So, as a precaution, mm -hmm. okay, because you have two females and this, I can't remember last time we've had something similar happen recently. Um, we had called in the federal authorities. We turned over our photos, our evidence. They spoke to our detectives and I'm having the FBI look at this case Hmm. cases to see if they are related are these two different possible individuals that may have um, two different suspects from the one on Shipley Street versus the one that's at 16th Street so what I'm saying is I'm having another set of eyes mm -hmm. look at this because um, you know our there are some similarities, but there are some dissimilarities. Well, this, th th thank you. Th that's a really good call. So, I mean, but I mean, because I, 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 I have never, I mean, that's why people watch Crossfire, because people mm -hmm. get information. I had never heard of it. Um, 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 are you still on the phone, ma'am? Yes, sir. Yeah, did you want to follow up? Did you want a follow up question on this? No, I just wanted to know um, what was the news, the status, of, or anything, or why we weren't, why, why. The um, community wasn't notified or warnings or, wow. you know, the suspect, what he looked like or, you know, just anything. I just, wow. it, everything is like er, um, word of mouth on the street. And I just wow. never heard anything, you know, from the police department, you know, uh, in the news journal or anything. I'm so glad you called. Let me, well, ask, you, let me ask you guys a question on, on her question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, th does it have anything to do with prostitution? Like, or am I going out of, or is that some of the things you're looking at? It's, but well, we can look at prostitution. We can look at drugs. I mean, we, I mean, we but look at the different victims and all the all the Thank you. So thank you very much for the call. That but was good. But was it's good not call. it's not classified as a serial killer, and that's what I, at this point, um, if we have, and that's as precautionary. I thought um, I had never heard of it. If we that. had it, if that's why we have other federal authorities good looking at it. Because okay. if they tell me different, and believe me, then we have um, definitely have to let the public know. Yeah, because we got somebody. Yeah, we got somebody out there that's a madman. How you doing? Welcome to the show. 
Hello. You, you got to turn your TV down. That's why it's like bark, killing our ears right here. Let me see. Please turn your TV down. Okay. Okay. All right, go ahead. Um, if it's not a serial killer, then what would you call it? And why aren't they talking about it on TV? That way the people can be more aware. Like the lady said before, it's only word of mouth. I've been hearing about it and hearing about it. I've also heard that someone got stabbed at a bus stop, a child. Wow. Is that true or is it not? I'm not aware of that. We're not aware of that, no. Wow. This and, is and we did have one other um, lady that, but that was domestic related. We had a woman stabbed and was killed. But so, but you, you heard about this serial killer, uh, supposedly silly, um, serial killer also, right? Yes, it's wow. going around everywhere. Wow. So, yeah, I think, and I I'm think all the way in Dover, so it's going around everywhere. Wow. It's just the simple fact that the police station and the media, no one's talked about it. And it's the big question, why not? Wow, you talk each, about it on here. Uh, you each, talk about it as you call here. Thank you. Each one of those incidents have been investigated there as, sim as separate matters. Uh, again, as a police department, we have called in outside agencies to come take a look at it to see if they are similar and if they may be connected. I guess after at the, the night, we're going to have to put something out. At this point, we're not able to confirm it. Oh, so you can't even say anything about it because you're not you're No, it's, it's not never confirmed. been confirmed, and we're, right. we're, it may take another week or two. We're still waiting back for It's the amazing feds. that people on the streets can hear and find out more stuff than we can. Um, wow. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Hello? Good evening, Norman. How you doing? All right. I want to ask the two officers a uh, question. Why, why, why did you stop? I remember years ago, you had the mini stations around town. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. you should set up some more mini stations instead of like the one just right downtown on one street because mm -hmm. the, the crime was really down then when you had the mini stations. Okay, thank you. Why don't we have mini stations around town? Wow. Was it successful? First of all, it's not cost effective for us to yeah. do, and it separated the department out where it became a supervisory issue and supervising personnel. Okay. Um, but again, right now, it's not cost effective for what, us. Was, to that, do. was that money that you had gotten from the Biden bill that you were able to do different I'm, stuff? I'm not sure where yeah, it was because sure. I, I actually was the lieutenant. I had the substation, in, um, the public service area right across from LACC, it was, was formerly <coughs> Old Jamaican. How you doing? Ed. Okay. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Hi, Norman. State Rep. Pod. I had to call in. I, I want to commend the police for the outstanding job they're doing. Mm -hmm. But I do want to say I was listening to this talk about a serial killer, and that wouldn't be my definition of a serial killer. I think that I understand that there were some, some issues that were related, and I understand what the chief is saying, that let's get all the information, but at the same time, let's be cautious. But we don't want to alarm people to say that there's a serial killer out there and it is not a serial killer out there. Well, let you me don't have all the facts. Um, um, Representative Potter, let me ask you a question. Well, where would people get this information when you get back-to-back -back calls and people are saying that they, that's what's going on in the streets? This is what they're saying. I mean, this is well, the first what you, time. What you could get, Norman, is that you get a lot of hearsay and then you get a lot of people saying a lot's going on that's not going on. So let's not confuse the people. And I think the chief should just make some clarity to stay statements about this right now. Okay, thank you. Thank you for calling. See, we get representatives on watching mm -hmm. everything. Thank you. Um, well, I think, I'm, unfortunately, we don't have any arrests out of these two cases either. I mean, we, we, we're definitely putting a lot of investigative efforts um, to the, the two ones, the ones on Shipley Street and then the one at 16. And, you, and I understand exactly what um, Representative Potter is saying. I understand exactly mm -hmm. what you guys are saying. But there is alarm if there's some stabbings or killings and there's no one you know what i mean and, and there's talk see but about being a serial killer more they're already calls. jumped to a serial killer that hasn't been determined yeah right but, you, but you said that there's some similarities so there could be there right could be. There, may, there may not be i mean it's right right may or may not be so mm -hmm. it's like the glass is half empty or full you you saying it's half empty and they say it's half full and, I, is and that that's right why analogy? i need an extra set of expert <laughs> eyes to look at these just and I, I people who do who do this for a living and the, the federal I authorities that's why we called them in and I don't want people thinking um, and having this all this public alarm people in a panic just like they did this this thing recently at uh, Kosciusko Park Every, 
Good. Everybody was in a panic thinking that we had uh, 10 to 12 individuals uh, gang raping two women in the park and leaving them for dead. And, you know, that got viral and that was something that was not true at all. Okay. How you doing? Um, well, somebody just Google, um, texted me and said if I Google it on Fox website, it will come up to you that the serial killer is here. We're not saying what people print and what the uh, news media the news media you. may put out. We don't control that. Gotcha. Um, but that's not what we're releasing as a police department. I got you. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Hi, Norman, and hi to your guests. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question, Chief Dunnigan. Yes. Um, yes. I have a question about um, policy for when um, young kids are brought in to the precinct, questioning of them without a parent or a guardian being present. Okay, with that, we have certain policies and um, part of the thing is, is when we bring a young person in, we do make um, attempts and calls to try to get their guardian to, to come in. Um, there is a notification um, process. Um, also, I mean, like you know, if we can bring an individual in, but if we start questioning them about crimes and everything, that's when we have we start moving into that Miranda area where we have to um, advise them of their rights. We prefer to have an adult present um, mm -hmm. when we question a child. Mm -hmm. um, believe me, it, 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 it's a lot easier too when you go down for that court stage to have the parent there with them. Um, there are times where we, the, the parent is called in and is right with us, and then there's other times where, <coughs> unfortunately, we cannot get the parent um, right away to come to the police department. Um, but we prefer. And, the, and I think just to clarify that, too, well, is the, okay. uh, the child will not be questioned in reference to a crime unless the adult uh, guardian is there. Mm -hmm. Now, we can ask questions of, you know, their name, their birthday, where they live, and things of that nature. But it, mm -hmm. once it gets to the crime, the meat of the crime, we will not question them without a guardian. Okay, well, I, I asked that question because this recently happened <coughs> and um, to a family member. Um, the grandparent was actually there mm -hmm. and um, at the police station and the child was questioned and they didn't let the grandparent up into the question. I mean, you know, where the child was questioned at. I'm trying to find out why that happened. Okay, thanks for the call. Um, I, I th all right. All right. I think you guys pretty much. Mm -hmm. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Hello, I have a question. For several... Hello? We're here. Go ahead. Go ahead. Several days, I've been watching the news and the Philadelphia news mm -hmm. With the uh, fires, people's cars and things being set on fire. Okay, now we've had several in our area in the last day or two, and I've heard nothing about it. And they've all been in the, the same area. What what area is that? Over on the east side, 24th and Pine Street. And people were just um, setting your cars on fire? Yes, my mother's car was set on fire. I woke up at quarter to five in the morning. Hmm. And about two hours before that, a neighbor's car was set on fire. Wow. And then I heard reports of three other antique cars being set on fire in the Market Street area. Have you guys heard anything? And, no, and, if, and yeah. if there were any arsons going on, that would be the FMO who would investigate that. The fire marshal office. I mean. the farm, the, you haven't heard from the fire marshal anyone? Yeah, the fire marshal did come out to my mother's car. He did say it was arson. Both incidents in our area were arson. But uh, but I think the question is then, when does it become criminal? When do you get do you guys get involved? Fire marshals with investigate criminal uh, matters. Oh, fire marshals mm -hmm. investigate yes. criminal matters. Wow. Yes. So, okay. So did that answer your question? I mean, but it's, been, it's not only the car fires, but also in the park area of Prices Park, we've had several police officers officers out here where the trash cans have been set on fire as well. Um, so evidently it's just someone going around just setting fires to things. I, I do know that Chief Goods, um, they had arrested some juveniles and some other ones just in, crazy. in West Center City for some trash fires. But the, what she's Thank talking about, call. the car things, I, I hadn't, wasn't alerted to that. Great. How you doing? Welcome to the show. 
Hello? Hello? Mm. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Yes, uh, thank you for taking my call. I have a daycare over on 22nd Street, mm -hmm. and constantly, you know, I'm calling the police. They never show up. I've called the mayor's office a couple times. There's been issues. I went out the front, the side door in July, and on the front of the building there were shootings. Hmm. I come into the daycare on Monday, and there's a flyer in my mailbox asking me to contact the police if I knew anything. So I'm saying at this point, why call no one showing up? So my question is, what can I do to get police presence in that area? 22nd and what's the other location? 22nd and what? That's 22nd Church. Um, again, we'll, t we'll take the matter and make sure that we get resources there. Um, but again, I'm... All right, thank you. Here. Thank you for calling to the show. You get results mm -hmm. here. You get results when you call Crossfire, man. That's why they call it Crossfire. Mm -hmm. We inform and educate the community. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Uh, yes, um, hello? Yeah, go ahead. I'm calling confronting, it's a, it's a house in my neighborhood. Actually, where they, they're selling drugs, there's prostitution going on, and mm -hmm. I know that everybody in the neighborhood done um, called in. I, mean, I even went outside and talked to the police myself. What's the address? Unless he may not it's want on, to give it right now. It's on Chestnut Street. Chestnut and um, Scott. Chestnut link between Scott and Lincoln. We, we have additional and resources. I, there. And, and everybody in my neighborhood said they don't call the police, and it seemed like the police don't seem to do nothing about it. I even went outside myself one day and, and talked to a police who was out here towing a car, mm -hmm. and he looked up. I told him the house, the people going in there, and he just looked at me like I was like talking out of my head. Mm. Wow. And you know, and, you know, I was and. We trying to figure out how you can just keep selling drugs up there and the prostitution and everything is going on and nothing is so being it's done like, about it. It's just an open market. Just like an open market. Wow. Well, what I can ask, if, if and if he doesn't want to give the address, because I know he's on air and he, and he lives yeah, understandably, you know, and I, I understand that. Too, so I don't really want to. Right. right. If I, I'm going to give you a number at, at 576-3940. That's um, my office number. You can right. give me the address, but I will let you know that um, we have certain houses. Um, for example, we have a house in 10 Hunter Block of West 2nd Street. We have been there three times so far this year, have had heroin uh, arrest. There's been a lot of heroin arrests. Heroin arrest. uh, uh, three times this yeah, year, that's just at that one they house. Yeah, that's what they're selling they sell heroin and pills. Right, so what we're trying to do with that three times We've invested over a hundred and some hours of police resources. We have gotten up with the city, the nuisance and thing to go after the, the home property owner um, after this individual. Hey, thank you, that was a good call. And they took down, um, the inspector took down that information. Thanks for okay, your call. Yeah. How you doing, welcome to the show. Hey Storman, how you doing? I'm fine. Good to see you up there again. I just want to say this. I'm looking at this TV. I'm just smiling because they don't even want to give the officers any credit by being out on the streets and looking at the ones that they say now, you know, that uh, we see this and we see that going on. Now you want to get on TV and say uh, we're going to be uh, telling you what's going on. Did you ever come out to the, the meetings and tell them that to their faces sometimes, you know, because we come from South Bridge, you know, and it was a thing that we looked at the one another when we was growing up. Yes, I can say that for myself, I raised five sons, and you know, it wasn't easy. But I do know my mother always say, check and see where your children are at, you know. The neighborhoods have went down. The police are not, they're doing their job. You all just don't want to do the job for saying that I'm going to tell and show where it's coming from. We are more or less want to protect the neighborhood and invest it so much that what are we doing? We're just helping the drug dealers do all what they want to do. And then one question was on there saying, um, how did you find out that the ladies had got raped at the uh, park? And, you know, 
when you hear those kind of stories, you say to yourself, now, I know that wasn't the truth. You know, well, you know, so then it was that there was a couple of killings going on. Let me tell you where it came from. I don't even own the phone. It came from Instagram and Facebook. They said, get on TV because channel so-and-so has got it on TV, and they're going to show you what's going on. I don't know these things. It's like word of mouth. And when things come by word of mouth, you got to question yourself. Is it truth or is it a lie? You know, but Storm, it's nice to see you up there. Right, thank you for the call. <laughs> How you doing? Welcome to the show. Hi, I'm Colin. I got a uh, question for the uh, for the chief. Go ahead. Um, our son lives in uh, Trolley Square, and uh, about a month ago, his house was broken into. We live in North Wilmington, and we had gone over to his call after finding out that his house was broken into, and it took almost five hours for the police to respond. Hmm. When we left our house in North Wilmington and passed Mount Pleasant High School, there were two city of Wilmington police cars there. We left his house two and a half hours later, and they were still sitting in the parking lot. Hmm. Wow, that's, 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 that's interesting. It was a little disturbing. Let me ask you a question. Is that, that, um, that, that's come up. What is the response time for, I mean, I know you guys do priority calls, like, yes. like somebody's car breakdown compared to someone's house g getting broken into, but five hours seem pretty exuberant, right? Not necessarily. It depends on what the activity on the street for that particular day and the officers that she may have seen sitting. Again, I'm not making excuses because mm -hmm. I don't know until I research. Uh -huh. um, but again, officers will sit in a location based on a, a complaint that they're currently on. Mm -hmm. So if you ride by, you see them there um, without asking them, you know, I don't know the reason they were there, but again, it doesn't seem um, exorbitant amount of time based on the activity that is occurring on the street at the moment. But, uh, but someone, again, I would have to research that. If someone's house is broken in at 6 o'clock and they call it please, now please get there at 11. Again, street activity dictates. There's other crimes that are going on. Life um, is first of all. First, yeah. So if there's an uh, incident that's occurring, so, uh, somebody. you're saying that day it could have been a murder going on. Again, someone get, getting shot. It's possible, but again, I, I don't know without researching it. But wow. the, the thing is, I mean, I guess, and in in our call takers will ask them too, you know, is the person still there right. or what, what's going on? Because if that person came across and said, yeah, the people are still in my house, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that just takes the elevation up mm -hmm. there. I mean, because right. then it, the, the suspects are still there and can cause harm. Do you have a follow up? Hello? Yeah, yes, I'm still here. No, we didn't. We, we just got the, uh, he got the police report, but it was just a little disconcerting that the call came in a little after 4 o'clock and they didn't get there till almost 9. Um, the back door had to be secured and, you know, he was asked why he was, you know, touching the door and putting it back together. You know, they were under the impression they didn't know what time they were going to be able to be out there. And, you know, he works a full time job, you know, has to get the door secured. Um, you know, can't be waiting, you know, five, six hours for that. And my only concern was is that there were two police officers sitting in the North Wilmington that's not even in the city's jurisdiction, even though that I understand now that, you know, the county and the cities, that there's no boundaries for that. But sitting at Mount Pleasant High School when we left and came back two and a half hours later and they're still sitting in the parking lot there, I didn't see any criminal activity going in there, going on in there when I drove in and just checked it out. Hey, thanks for the call. Thank you. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Hey. Hey. Can I talk? Yes. Well, Storm and Norman, when's he gonna put me on? You're on now. I'm on now? Yes. Okay. Storm and Norman from Christina River Club. Do you, yes. Do you have a question? No, I don't have a question. Okay. What I have to say is, and what I've been, what, I, what I've been trying to get through here is the newspaper needs to let people know when there's problems in their territory or their area because I was robbed way back in the day 15 years ago when I left DuPont and came home for lunch. And, and that was before the ex-mayor had passed away. And, they, and then the, and the woman that was in charge of the situation, which I'm glad there's a woman here now that, that's a, 
the chief, uh, she she gave me uh, a ton of crap about, uh, oh, you don't know you you're, you're coming home, <laughs> and, and you don't you don't know that. Uh, there's these break-ins that have been going on all yeah, around here. You know what happens sometimes, it, it gets confused, especially 15 years ago. Hey, but thanks for the call. A graduation party. What about them? I don't know. Do you know you're on the air? <laughs> sometimes it gets bizarre. <laughs> I think I was going to listen to the graduation party thing. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Hi. Um, listen, I'm calling. I was, one of the offers said something about uh, the mini stations being cost effective. Um, we have several places that they could ask uh, in my area. The building is still empty, and it's uh, in good shape. And... I think if the cameras were all working and they had a mini station in certain areas of the city, a lot of the crime and murders wouldn't happen. We know where these hot spots are. Okay. And I think there's a way that all of this can be stopped. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, that, that is, yeah, why don't we use some of those? All right. Hey, look, uh, we're running out of time, so we're going to be kind of rapid here. Uh, we're going to take calls within like 30 seconds, okay? Let's get right to it. How you doing? Welcome to the show. You have a question? Hello, Norman. Um, I have a question. I was just wondering, um, I was just wondering if, um, why, why do the um, police officers ride around in their cars as opposed to not getting out and maybe walking the beat if somebody's Prime areas. Hey, can, can uh, I, can, is it a safety issue? Can, can, uh, I, can I take up? Can I take up for? Not can I, something that uh, is safe for them to do. Okay, thank you. We, we run out of time. I will say this. I said this in the green room. I've seen some uh, police officers walking over South Bridge lately, mm -hmm. the last mm -hmm. few days, and I, um, I guess that's one of the moves. How you doing? Real quickly, what's going on? All right. Um, could you tell me why y'all have a homicide unit in Wilmington, Delaware? Yeah, I asked that question earlier. Uh, and I agree with you wholeheartedly, but I think that they said they have something similar to it's that. It's called major crimes. It's called major crimes, not homicide. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Oh. Okay, the, um, the stop loader and uh, sign mm -hmm. that you put on your windows. Uh huh. Okay. Um, When I'm at work, if people sit up over my steps and the signs all over the windows, I mean, the police just ride by and keep going. Okay, thank you. I guess she wants the um, loading signs to be enforced. You know, when they put the signs and stuff. They put the sign the signs up. But the thing is, is um, sometimes if an officer's passing by, I mean, they might be going to a call for service. Um, though our officers know now, too, that some um, citizens have these loitering signs up that they can question the individuals that are sitting on their steps. Um, the only problem is if, if you live there, I mean, you have every right to sit on that step. Okay, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we had another productive show. We got calls coming in. Uh, we can't take the calls. We waited too long. Um, and next week we're going to have, we're going to talk about education. We're going to have the mm -hmm. Secretary of um, Education do um, Mark Murphy. He's going to be in, so we're going to talk about some real education needs. You know, we thought a lot of questions on this show, and I thought that you both handled them very well, and I appreciate that. I always appreciate when our guests come on and we engage, uh, because I think the community learned a lot today, because even if there is or isn't a serial a killer out there, I think we learned something. Even if you have or didn't catch the people who did the rape, I think you guys said you have two people of interest, mm -hmm. and I think that's the kind of stuff that we need to know. So I want to thank you both for coming on, and it's good. Got to have you back once in a while. Chief Zerber yes. just come on all the time. <laughs> Matt, Matt, I might have had him on too much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you guys you. are doing an excellent right. job. I couldn't, I couldn't do your job. Thank you. By the way, thank you. I hope everyone is enjoying it, and we'll catch you next week.